Hey everybody, hope you guys are all doing safe. So we have a new video today. This is the Xiaomi 11T Pro. So you might have heard, but Xiaomi has dropped the word Mi from its branding for its phones to the Western audience. So now it is not the Mi 11T Pro, it is just the 11, Xiaomi 11T Pro. And next year's Xiaomi um, flagship, the first flagship will be Xiaomi 12, not Xiaomi Mi 12. That's actually not a major change because in China, the phones were already called just Xiaomi 12, Xiaomi Mix. There was never a Mi in the part of the name in China. That Mi was always just for English speakers, for people in the West. So anyway, I have the phone here. I've been using it for about like four or five days. I'm gonna keep this video a little bit short because this phone is an iterative upgrade on the Xiaomi Mi 11. It's not a major overhaul. So this phone's gonna come at a lower price than a typical premium flagship. But at the same time, you're getting all the polish that Xiaomi's premium flagship phones are known for. So let's go over the specs. So you have a 6.67 inch AMOLED panel, 120 hertz refresh rate, 2400 by 1080 resolution. And it is a completely flat panel. So those of you who don't like curved screens will be happy. So the specs are pretty good. Like I said, 120 hertz OLED display. It looks great around the back. You have a triple camera system. This is very similar to the camera system seen in the Xiaomi Mi 11. You have a 108 megapixel camera, f1.75 aperture, and you have an eight megapixel ultra wide angle camera. So the ultra wide is a little bit weak at eight megapixel, and then a five megapixel tele macro sensor. So that will give you pretty sharp two times zoom and a really good macro camera, but if you zoom beyond two times, like five times, 10 times, it's not gonna look as good as the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra or the Xiaomi Mix 4. Now, the good thing about buying Xiaomi phones lately is even if you're buying a mid-range or even a budget device, like $300, $400, you're still getting excellent haptics and excellent speakers, and that is true here. The haptics on these things, it's the same haptics used in the Mi 11 and the Mi 11 Ultra is basically one of the best haptics in all smartphones right now, probably up there with Samsung's uh, Galaxy S21 Ultra. And the speakers are really good too because they are tuned by Harman Kardon and their speaker grills at the top and bottom. So sound is coming out equally. The processor inside is a Snapdragon 888, so not the 888 Plus. And there's either eight or 12 gigs of RAM with 128 or 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage, so all the latest components. There is, however, one spec here that's better than in most other flagship phones, even premium ultra flagships. That's the charging brick. So this phone comes with a charging brick in the box. So at 120 watt, it tops up this 5,000 milliamp hour battery from zero to 117 minutes. And I actually did a charging test last night and the phone charged from 5% battery up to like 40% in five minutes. Five to 40 in five minutes. Now the Xiaomi 11T Pro starts at 649 euros. That comes out to around 760 US dollars. That's for the eight gig RAM, 128 gig version. I think this price in Europe is fair because you're getting a really good main camera, Snapdragon 888, and a really beautiful 120 hertz OLED display that gets up to 1,000 nits of brightness and it's covered by Gorilla Glass Victus. However, the back of this phone actually is made of plastic, which is surprising considering the price of this phone in Europe. But you guys know how it is. You guys in Europe have to pay a slight markup. That's just the nature of the consumer tech business. Overall, the 11T Pro has a comfortable in-hand feel. The plastic back has a matte coating to it and it curves on the left and right side. The phone measures 8.8 .8 millimeters in thickness and weighs 203 grams. And the front uh, glass panel is Gorilla Glass Victus. So the camera system here, it, the main camera in particular, the 108 megapixel sensor is pretty good because it has a relatively large image sensor size. When you take photos, you get natural depth of field. That's something we've come to expect from all of Xiaomi's um, semi flagship devices for the past year now. The ultra wide angle camera, unfortunately, it is a little bit weak, but Xiaomi's software algorithms for its camera it has gotten really good. So if you use the ultra wide angle camera in low light situations, just point and shoot, the shot's gonna be noisy, a little bit uh, lost, soft on details. 
But if you turn on night mode, it fixes matters significantly. So even though the ultra wide hardware is pretty weak, software does a good job of fixing things. In general, Xiaomi's camera software is just very fun to use. One of my favorite features that's been available in the last like five or six Xiaomi phones now, it's clone video. That's the ability to film a video with two versions of the same subject. It's really fun to play with. Anytime I take one, I post it on Instagram, people leave comments left and right asking, whoa, how'd you do that? Like, which phone is that? So the fact that Xiaomi offers this feature built into the camera app, in not just the 11T Pro, even in phones all the way down to like the $200 pricing, it's pretty cool. So in all, the 11T Pro's camera is pretty good but not amazing you know especially for someone like me who's used the Mi 11 Ultra the S21 Ultra the newest iPhone and pretty soon the Google Pixel 6 so you know my standards are really high for most people this will be good enough and I think that's a major selling point of the 11T Pro ultimately it's a phone that's good enough for most people for someone who wants the Snapdragon 888 and a really good main camera and a immersive vibrant screen but they don't want to pay $1,200 for all the extra bells and whistles like wireless charging um, like a ceramic back all those things are very nice but most people don't really need that in fact the 11T Pro has a case inside a box too so for most people it already comes with everything you would need and I think Xiaomi has become so skilled at making phones that they can overcome using Maybe not the absolute latest, most premium hardware because the software is good enough to fix it. Like this ultra wide sensor really isn't that good, but then when you shoot in night mode, it really fixes matters. And likewise, you know, it doesn't have Snapdragon Triple Eight Plus, but the phone zips around really nicely and the animations look really smooth. In fact, I like Mi UI's 120 hertz animations better than any other phones. 120 hertz animations right now and the phone also has a vapor cooling chamber so if you do game a lot it won't heat up and the 5000 mAh battery is going to power this phone all day because the resolution is just 1080p it's not a quad hd resolution so you're all in all yet another highly polished device from xiaomi so that's about it for this video i have a lot more content coming up including a full review of the honor magic 3 pro plus coming out soon and probably the next iphone whenever that comes so um, if you're interested in keeping up to date with all the latest gadgets, please consider subscribing to my channel or follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.